So in this module, we're thinking about whether there is an obligation to purchase local food. To answer this question, the obvious place to start is by looking at the one feature that all local food has in common, namely it doesn't have to travel very far to get from the farm where it was grown to your plate. The question then becomes, is there a reason to think that we're obligated to buy local food because we're obligated to minimize food miles? That is the number of miles that our food has to travel. Why would we be obligated to minimize food miles? One reason to think that we're obligated to minimize food miles is that the longer our food has to travel to get to our plate, the more CO2 is emitted by the trucks, planes, trains, or whatever that transported that food. But CO2 emissions, of course, contribute to global warming. If we're obligated to minimize our contributions to global warming, then it would follow that we're obligated to minimize food miles. So are we obligated to minimize our contributions to global warming? Well, if utilitarianism is true, then it would seem that we are. Global warming will have a devastating effect on many of the world's most vulnerable people. This will decrease overall happiness, but utilitarianism says that we should maximize happiness. It would seem then that we are obligated to minimize our contributions to greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, so if utilitarianism is true, then it looks like there's a pretty solid argument for minimizing food miles. There's also room, though, to argue that Kantian theories imply that we're obligated to minimize food miles because contributing more than necessary to greenhouse gas emissions doesn't respect the humanity of the people most vulnerable to the negative effects of climate change. You might also argue that the divine command theory implies that we're obligated to minimize food miles because, according to some religious traditions, God has commanded us to protect the earth, and minimizing food miles is a good way to do that. So that's a quick summary of some of the basic ethical arguments in favor of minimizing food miles. Let's now talk about responses to these arguments. The most important objection to these arguments is that transportation isn't the only aspect of a food's life cycle that contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. Indeed, one study suggests that transportation is responsible for only 11% of food-related greenhouse gas emissions. But if transportation is only responsible for that small a slice of food-related greenhouse gas emissions, then it's possible that some foods transport transported from far away might be better for the environment than foods grown locally. That's right. Food production is a much larger contributor to global warming than food transportation is. What that means is that in some cases, it might make more sense to buy food that has to be transported long distances if that food was produ produced much more efficiently than a similar food grown locally. So this is one of the main points made by the Saunders, Barber, and Taylor study that you read selections from. Of course, Saunders, Barber, and Taylor don't just claim that it's a theoretical possibility that some local food is responsible for more emissions than food transported long distances. They also claim to identify examples in which this is true. They say, for example, that minimizing greenhouse gas emissions requires that people in the United Kingdom eat lamb from New Zealand instead of lamb raised in the UK. Even though the lamb from New Zealand has to be transported a very long way to get to the UK. Now, Philpot raises a few objections to Saunders, Barber, and Taylor's claims about how lamb from the UK and lamb from New Zealand stack up. But the overall point stands. It's not always better to eat locally, since food production is responsible for more emissions than food transportation is. That's right. But that doesn't mean that food miles should go out the window. It just means that they're not the only thing to worry about. Yes, if you're buying food grown in an extremely inefficient way, you're not doing any favors for the environment. But maybe the right lesson is that while food miles are a morally relevant factor, and they're one that we should pay attention to, they're not the end of the story. Of course, it might be hard to figure out the whole story, but who said that being a conscientious locavore would be easy?